This is Cuban Cassis for I Film London. We're at the Ultra Arena here for the press conference for George Groves and Noe Gonzalez Alcabar. I think that's how you pronounce his name, is that right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, first things first, how much footage of Alcabar have you studied or are you aware of? Not a lot. I, when the fight was announced and I was going to be fighting this guy, I watched a little bit and I thought, uh, that's enough. Like, I don't like to overanalyze my opponents because. I start concentrating on their, their weaknesses a little bit too much and then I start thinking the fight's going to be a little bit easier than it is. I like to have that sort of danger element. And for me, the, da the best danger element is not knowing too much about my opponent. So um, I leave the, the study into to Adam Booth and the rest of the team. And um, I've just made sure that I'm in the best condition I can be in. I've had the best possible sparring I could. And uh, that's it, I'm ready to rock Saturday night. In the press conference, it was a relatively short press conference, um combined fight with you, you and Alcabar, um, Chalamba and Bellew, but you were quite confident, you said you were going to take him out. Yep, definitely going to take him out. I mean, I know that uh, it's not just about uh, winning now, it's about looking good, and um, that means you've got to take this guy out, and um, I plan to do that. You know, I'm going to go out, I'm going to be you know, on, on form, I'm not going to go in there with a lazy mentality because this guy can whack, he's proved that f just for looking you know, for his box record, you know, for his record. So, um, I know that you know, I'm going to have to have my wits about me, but I'm going to you know, force his hand, make him make mistakes, and then I'm going to make him pay for it. Obviously, I'm not asking you to overlook this fight, but are you looking at a possible world title fight in your next fight, or maybe later on in the year? That's what I'd love to have. You know, I'm one step away, but that one step is a giant leap. Um, I've said that f you know, for weeks now. I've realised that you know, my rankings mean a lot, but they don't mean... I'm guaranteed to fight for a world title, and um, so I've got to look good. I've got to, you know, do what's asked of me, and working with Matram, I'm sure Eddie can deliver me a world title um, sooner rather than later. You know, I'd love to have one as soon as possible. I'm happy to take the quickest route rather than the easiest route. Um, whether that means I have to go to Germany and fight Robert Stieglitz, or whether it means I get a crack at the winner of these two Saturday night, um, I'm happy and willing and ready to fight anyone. And, uh, that's what I want. Do you think too much has been made of this sparring with Kessler? Has it been blown out in the media, out of proportion in the media? Well, in, in respect that, uh, it, is, it, is, it is a bit shocking that two, um, you know, two, two fighters of the same weight, one a world champion, one you know, ranked number two for his belt, that's me, uh, would spar, because there's a possibility we could fight down the line very soon. But um, the way it's got Carl's nose bent out of shape so much that I've you know, sparred with this guy, he's called me a traitor, and uh, I'm up for high trees, and I didn't realise Carl pronounced himself royalty, is is he king, where, where is he king of, I don't, I don't know, you know, Carl's a, a very good fighter, but um, he's not, he's not the elite fighter that he sort of put his, put himself um, up as, and um, he's in there fighting Saturday night with a guy who's already beat him, so he's technically number two in Europe, and I obviously hope he wins Saturday night, but um, I don't know why he's so concerned with what I'm doing when really he should be worried about what he's got to do Saturday night. Do you like Carl Froch? Yeah, I, 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 I don't really think too much about him. You know, I'm, I'm, I like him in that when, I, when I've known him, you know, we've always got along, um, but we've become rivals and uh, that's fine. I don't dislike the guy. I don't have anything against him whatsoever. All it means is that he's got a, a, a world title. I want to be a world champion. So uh, when it comes down to it, if this fight can happen, you know, I'll take it. And he's, he's still just a rival. I don't like him. I don't dislike him. It's the same as with all my other opponents. Um, he, at the moment, has tried to sort of nothing me and sort of dismiss me as, you know, need to go out and prove yourself and all this sort of stuff. But you know, I'm fighting these good guys where the, where the risk reward is not in my favour. These guys are good, but not necessarily uh, the most established fighters. And um, you know, the danger is that you get beat off a fighter who you know, the public don't know. And I think, you know, that means that, you know, I'm, do I'm doing what I've got to do. Uh, these fights are going to make me improve, make me a better fighter. So that when time does come to step up, the only time you're not going to have question marks over your head is when uh, you beat guys that people know about. So, you know, to make a fight against Carl Frotch, I have to go out and beat him. When I do beat him, I think people uh, will believe me a little bit more. Do you think Eddie Hearn's got the bottle to put you two in the ring together? I know he's talked about it, but actually doing it is a different thing because you're, you're both his fighters. 
Well, yeah, I mean, Eddie, Eddie's moving quick as a promoter. He's uh, he's moving up the rankings you know, quicker than anyone. And uh, he signed up a lot of fighters, but I don't think, if I think about it, he's got two fighters, um, you know, this close to being rivals at this level of, you know, level of boxing. He's got Kelbrook and, and per Purdy, but the fact that Froch is an established world champion, he's having his first Sky pay-per-view fight. Now, I'm a... Uh, you know, a serious rival. I'm a ranked rival. I'm very close to fighting for this for the for a world title. He says I need to go out and get experience, but you know, how much more experience can I get? Because uh, I'm ranked number one, number two, number three, uh, with three different governing bodies. You know, there's not that many people in front of me, and uh, you know, for me, I'd like to to think that if Cole comes through Saturday night, Eddie would definitely have the bottle to step up and make a massive, massive fight make a load of money, put on another show, flex his promotional muscle. Um, if this fight, if that fight was promoted correctly, we'd be back here at the O2, it will be sold out, and um, it will be another pay-per-view event. I'll say, oh, I've, I've been there, done it. You yeah, have indeed. Um, but everything leading up to this camp, because obviously your inactivity last year, you've made up for it this year, haven't you? Because you've had, you're going to have three fights in a very short space of time, so it was more about building up your rounds rather than who you're fighting in a way yeah you know um just getting momentum really just getting momentum you know a, a clean bit of training where i didn't have to necessarily prepare for a 12 round fight where you have to peak and then you know have a come off period i, I sort of uh had two fights back to back where i trained the night before you know boxed trained the next day you know they were they were just like training sessions this one obviously is a 12 round fight you know it's a it's a serious fight so you know, I've had to treat it like a you know, serious camp, and now I've, I'm tapering off. I'm going to make the 12 stone limit. I'm going to you know do it all properly. Uh, but yeah, as you say, I've, I've had you know, a nice bit of momentum, and uh, I think you know, I've made massive improvements in the gym, and uh, that they will come across Saturday night. All right, George. Thank you uh, very much for talking to. Me. I haven't spoke to you for a while, have I? No, I was going to ask. Um, so, what improvements have you made on your transatlantic trips to the US? Obviously, work, you know, interviewing high profile fighters and you know, superstars in division, current and former world champions. What have you learned? Um, I've le I don't know what I've learned, but I've learned that we're more known over there than I realised we was, which was quite good. Are you sure? Are you sure you're just not imagining that? I definitely won't imagine that. I was in Vegas for one week and New York, Atlantic City for another week. and. Uh, yeah, a lot of people out there watch our stuff. A lot of people actually watch our stuff with Adam. Does that guy watch your stuff? I don't know. Ask him. They're in the middle of an interview, otherwise I'd run straight over there. Ask him. Obviously, you haven't learned that much on your trip, so you and obviously, you're not you're not the the sort of famous interviewer that you're claiming to be. Obviously, I don't claim to be. I don't claim. You, don't said, claim you said to everyone. You was, you was shocked and, and surprised by how much uh, yeah. you know how much, how well known you were out there. I'm shocked and appalled you're lying to me like this. No, I'm not lying to you. I'm not so lying to you. I was there. Okay, so so you're you know you're getting relatively well known in the UK. You said you're a massive box office hit in the states. How I didn't well actually known are say you in that. Denmark. Do the Vikings follow you? I, I bet you one of. I bet, I bet you've heard of iFilm London. I can't go over there because they're doing an interview for Sky. I'm not sure they are. Andy Scott, Sky. Yeah, but can we just chatting? If you, so you're, what you're saying is Can Sky you not dwarfs you as a... Of course I do. We're a media online outlet. Sky are a multi-million pound industry channel. Million or billion? Yeah, billion. Multi-million. Billion. Now I'm just disappointed because you're just, you're just letting the big guys step all over you. I thought you was a contender. I'm you're a contender. You're baby. You might, you've got billions. Just, just make a move. Or just, just go and hijack just, their interview. Just call out some names. I'm sure you know, you'll get it right. Soon. What about the one in the end? Because he doesn't look like he's really doing anything. Don't ask he? him. I'll wait here. What about is that one? Oh no, no, that's not one. No, no, that's not one. That's not one. <coughs> He's team big Buglioni, you know. I still think he's back. I've just realised we've missed the whole Carl Froch and Mikel Kessler press conference. Does that bother you? <sighs> It did. I wanted to sit ringside and watch that press conference. Apparently, apparently, um, we've had to have separate press conferences because I don't know. Someone's insisted that I not be present during the press conference. Why is that? 
I have is no that, idea. Have you had any engine no, in it? I haven't heard that. We're free now. All right, come on. Come, you come with me now. Hello, guys. How you doing? Good. You all right? Uh, do you know who this is? No. Do you know who this is? No. I think I do. I'm not quite sure, but I uh, guess. Remember his face, and uh, I think he's a pretty decent boxer. Wow. That's it, spot on. Spot on. Yeah. Absolutely spot on. Uh, could you just introduce yourself to iFilm London? I'm Mike Haywood. Okay, Mike Haywood, hello. And I'm Per Anderson. Per Anderson. And I'm Mark Roberts. Mark Roberts, can you tell, tell us what you guys are doing here, dressed how you are? We're historical reenactors and we portray the Joms Vikings, who were a Danish and Polish group of Vikings. And so we're here to support Mikkel Kessler coming from Denmark. Wow, and how. So you're all backing Kessler to beat Frotch this week, I'm assuming? Yeah, kind of, but I'm, I'm here because I'm really close to Danish. I'm Skonish. As far south you, yeah, as far south you can come in, in Sweden. So during the Viking Age, it was Denmark. And I want to be a Dane again, but we are occupied by the Swedish government. So there you go. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, could I pass as a Viking? Be honest. Of course you could. Yes. yes. Are there Vikings that actually look like me? Yes. There would have been, yes, certainly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's very good. I might check the family tree and see if I might be related What's to you guys. Surname? Groves. Groves. Well, that's an Anglo-Saxon name. So it's a Germanic race, the same as the Vikings were. So every chance that you've got Germanic origins. Coogan Groves. Coogan. Coogan Groves. How would you spell that? K-U-G-A-N. Uh, that's a uh, step nomad's name. That's Turkish. Oh, okay. Is it, is it true one, one in three of the British public are um, a product of Viking rape? I, d I don't, really don't know, George. No, do you know, because they just invaded, didn't they, like back in the day, and they just, they just they're super strong, come over on the boats and just sort of took over. Was it the Romans? They took over from the Romans? Is it? Or am no, I from the Anglo-Saxons. The Anglo-Saxons had invaded as the Roman Empire was declining. The Anglo-Saxons conquered all England. That's why we're called England after the Angles. It means England. And the next wave of Germanic migrations were the Vikings. Ah. So the Vikings came and attacked the Anglo-Saxons, who'd come here as pagans themselves, but become Christian in between, and then complained when another group of pagans came and invaded them. Yeah. Mm. Typical English, really, isn't it? Typical English. Always moaning. It's always, always else, moaning. It? Coming over, taking our jobs, taking our... I think I'm English, yeah. I live in London. Parents are English. Grandparents are English. So. His name is actually St. George, so, you know, might be a good Yeah. So I'm actually from Babylon. Really? That's where St. George is from, yeah. Well, Vikings, thank you very much for talking to iFilm London, and uh, we hope everything goes well this week for you. OK. No, we Cheers. will have a Danish world champion. <laughs> That's it. We will have a Danish world champion. Yeah, I was going to say you've got one. He's already champion, but you know he could have two belts. You mean? Of course. Not much chance of that. Carl Frosch is going to knock him out. Well, anyway, this is Coogan Cassius <laughs> for iPhone. Carl Frosch is going to knock him out, isn't he? We all hope so, don't we? we set all hope up, set so. up your super fight. Yeah, there it is, the super fight. So it's, 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 it's all it's all me and you were talking about, isn't it? <laughs> and who else Gro matters? Grove three Frosch. I'm, I'm on it. Yeah. Right. Kogan Cassius with uh, St. George Groves. I'm not really a Groves, I sort of pretended I was a Groves, you know, I'm not really Groves. Uh. He looked at you and thought, fuck you, you ain't Groves. Yeah, but, probably. you know. You flattered a little bit. What is your last name? Cassius. <laughs> Kogan Cassius for I from London with George Groves. Thank you very much. Cheers, George. <laughs>